um, traditional colors of Africa, and this, this is the oldest African American neighborhood in the city, and probably the most prominent African American historic African American community in Western North Carolina. Um, so, kind of how how things took root here was that um, General Patton, this, this bit, you know Patton Avenue. There's a lot of things named after him. He was really into improving community, and so he. And Isaac Dixon established the first like, black church in Nashville okay. and the first black school. And he sold Isaac Dixon his old slave quarters who, who the, he rented those out to other freedmen so it became like this free black community. Right. And that was right, right down the hill from here. So there's a map there that kind of shows the area in uh, was it 1890. That, and there's a little cluster of houses. I, we always meant to put a star on there for where Dixon Town is and where we're at, but it shows this very area, and you can kind of see what was called Dixon Town, was, which was the um, little community that s sprouted on that land. Um, and Isaac Dixon ran like a coal yard and a taxi company and a general store, and it, it became like an autonomous community. Mm -hmm. um, and then this section here is about the coming of the railroad um, and I don't know if you read the quotes on there yeah yeah so there was I mean the, the rail around here was built mostly by um, prison labor black prison mm -hmm. labor and but then that also brought some money and jobs to um, to other Absolutely. families so it, it brought money into the community yeah uh, and then there's the YMI <coughs> orchestra which the YMI was this alternate YMCA that was um, funded by Van George W. Vanderbilt and okay. in collaboration with Isaac Dixon, who once okay. again was this prominent yeah. community man. Yeah, um, and that's that building right. up there in the corner. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was Asheville's one and only all black orchestra Ooh. and uh, important institution in this community. Um, and then coming up the hill is the Catholic Hill School, which is the very first school uh, for black children. And it, it was a huge tragedy because it burned down in like seven. Um, and a few other people. <clears throat> um, and it was, it was located up on the hill, um, just right across the valley over there. And when it burned down, Stevens Lee was built in its place, which is the next school up the hill here that became a huge institution. That was like the biggest, um, the biggest uh, black high school in Western North Carolina. And people would come from all over the state and I mean all over the mountains, Western North Carolina, to to board here and go to school there. Um, which is ironic because people talk, you know, after desegregation when kids were bused to different schools mm -hmm. and you know they didn't integrate the black schools that right. ultimately got torn down okay. the black kids had to go to the white schools and there was all this busing happening but it was um, ironic because people had been already been like traveling really far distances right. just to go to just that to go school to school. yeah um, and where, where was this? that was in the same, same location, location right up on the hill over here you, there's a the gym is still there the, the Stevensley the... rec center yeah and uh, this is an image of the band. I actually screen printed that in the YMI orchestra yeah. and in that photograph of the hand on was a big, crazy process. Um, yeah, <laughs> those giant are so cool. silk screens. Yeah. Um, and uh, we passed on this right. wall, and then coming up through here, this is like more recent past, which, well, Stevens Lee is part of the more recent past, too, but this is what people yeah, remember. Yeah. yeah. So, like, everyone who's in the Just Folks organization is probably, like, late 50s, early 60s, and they all grew up in this neighborhood, and they, and they remember, you know, th this whole section is based on stories of people that... Right. I really, I, I'm, my favorite section of the whole mural is these people on, sitting in the chairs yeah. in front of the houses because there used to be these hills right around here were like jam-packed full of um, old houses and 
this little poem written here that says these are the days of riches of velvet and pine. Those are street names, velvet and pine, Lincoln Hazard. It says in Valley the Vine. Valley was the main artery that went through the neighborhoods that um, people really talk about with like intense reminiscing. <laughs> They're like, there is, uh, it was just like such a tight-knit community and then the, there were lots of tiny little streets and there were even dirt roads and talk about like urban agriculture, people were gardening back in the day. And um, people talk about how, you know, and, and I think in any, um, any kind of tight-knit, autonomous, impoverished community, there's like an incredible sense of community. Like people look out for each other. So there, everyone always says like, you know, even though we didn't, have much we were rich because we had what we needed yeah. um, these so those houses behind the people aren't there anymore and I think that the hard thing about like the biggest uh, conundrum of this mural mural was how to um, how to like address the history of urban renewal without having like without making a big sad dismal like depressing statement <laughs> yeah so we didn't even really you know it's just implied because there's all these houses that a lot of people own themselves yeah. that um, aren't there anymore and it's a to me urban renewal is a major story of, it's a story of stolen equity like people's family fortunes where like people like the poverty gap was widened wealth disparity was exacerbated residential segregation was exacerbated yeah. because if people had been able to like continue to fix up their own homes and own their own property that's how you like that's how yeah it's how you build wealth and that's how um people yeah, the exact so, yeah yeah so like taking people out of homes they own appear in their rental properties where people rented for generations is not helping at all um but about Eagle Street where there were all these, um, really, you know, there, there were lots of businesses here. It was a pretty thriving business district. Yeah. Um, and it was kind of, it was like a separate city before, integ before integration. Um, you know, you could get everything you needed. There were so many clubs and pool halls and music venues. And, um, it was it was its own thing here. Like, you know, I, and I've heard all these stories, but I still can't really even picture what it was like. Um, so this is an attempt um, to picture what it's like. But this is another photograph of Andrew Clark's this like gang of boys that I just love. They look so classic. Yeah. Um, and then these are two store owners. There's Miss McQueen who owned the Ritz and Salma Porter who had a little shop. Uh, and this is kind of about nightlife. There's, we put Roberta mm -hmm. Flack in there because she's a famous singer from Asheville area. Cool. And we just wanted to... And there's Nina Simone. Yeah, she's in the she's background. Been here too. Yeah, she's, so. she went to high school here. Um, although I don't think she liked it here, but she... <laughs> 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 and then there's Pat McAfee, who is a singer in this, this area. And this band called the... Um, bite chew spit or something like that huh. <laughs> um and then our friend tim who just he's part of just folks who just happened to have this amazing photograph of himself in the 70s <laughs> and we're like, 